Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to your talking town slightly earlier than normal. So if you're watching on catch up, don't forget FTA comment for the algorithm. Richard Moss, I know you'll be watching this. So I hope you're having a fantastic holiday, sunning yourself, uh, come back fit, well and healthy for the running that is to come, which obviously starts at Blackburn. We'll cover that. We've got Southampton on the Monday, we've got Norwich after that. Just a little bit of a game against Norwich, not a massive one. Um, but it's so exciting, even my webcam decides to go in and out there with the Zoom. Um, we've got some great comments coming in. I had a weekend off, went away with the family, and it's just town decided to drop a load of uh, historic events with the women's team playing, over 10,000 fans, top notch, by the way, uh, support there, and a 5 0 victory. What is it about town teams at the moment who can't stop scoring goals at Portman Road? It's exciting stuff. Then we had a little bit of a, a, a big news about investment from Bright Path. We'll touch on that. Training ground plans. Uh, it's all been going on. I only stepped out of the out of the boo for the weekend. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, lots of you coming in. Get your comments coming in. As Sharon, Sharon says, anyone know if hers is back on the grass yet? He was due to be back on the grass, if I remember a McKenna interview uh, not so long ago. In, in the coming future. So hopefully, you never know. You never know. He could be big come the end of the season. Maybe he'll be there for that Coventry away game that's shaping up to be a potential Barnsley. We know what Hurst does in big games, like the Barnsley one. Um, evening chap says, Sean, never a dull day or week at Portman Road. Certainly so. Uh, while boys while boys are, are always away, I think he means while the boys are away, the girls will play. Oh, and more Americans want a piece of the pie I certainly do. I've dropped a link. So if you want to come on and have your say about anything to do with your football club, you are more than welcome to. Please do hit that link. Uh, we are partnered with Match Bingo. Before we go anywhere any further, uh, if you're like Sean, actually, who um, plays Match Bingo and has won some big cash prizes from them, then follow his fantastic lead. Play Match Bingo, win cash prizes. Are you a sports enthusiast? Of course you are. That's why you're here. Then how do players on your screen right now? When you play, you support the crucial work of the East Anglian Air Ambulance. Every game helps to save lives and provide vital, vital medical care to those in need. How are your players on your screen? But we're all living in 2024. We all know how to download apps. We all know how to find things by now. But please, be gamble aware. Over 18s only. And just because Sharon's mentioned Hurst, who sadly is injured, we are also part of some like osteopaths. 01449613633. You guys and girls have been jamming those phone lines so much so I can't even get in the place anymore. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I'm kind of like shooting myself in the football promoting it, but it's a great service. Osteopath, physiotherapy. Give Freddie a call. He's the governor there and tell him the gov from Talking Town has sent you. But just leave some appointments to the rest of us, all right? Please. I need an osteo appointment. Please. Right. Joining me is the man, the myth, the legend, Matthew Phillips. Matthew, now you didn't go away. The only member of Talking Town that didn't leave his uh, postal code. I can't afford to be going away, mate. I've just done 120 quid down the vets. Oh, dear. Would have is... been, easy... been easier to buy a new, new cat. <laughs> How is Floyd? I hope he's all right. He was all right. He was all right. He had to have the, the vaccination thing, which I couldn't claim on pet insurance. And then, of course. They have to have flea stuff and worming tablets. The woman goes, here's your worming tablets, Mr. Phillips. I looked over my shoulder. They ain't, they ain't for me. But um, yeah, some 120 quid lighter. <laughs> yes, that but can me. you please stop scratching across the floor, Mr. Phillips, and they're not for you. It's what you missed it to say afterwards, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Pets normally this expensive. They normally this expensive. Do you have this Don't talk to me about oh, okay. pets it is a pets. thing, yeah. This time last year, I was missing shows for fun because Toby was eating a grape. He was eating chocolate. Oh, yeah, he was doing yeah. all sorts. Got a bit all cavalier, sorts. didn't he? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, well, he's I a lab retriever, mate. You, you, you leave a bag out, he'll be in it. He'll be in it, you know. <laughs> but, um, hey, big weekend of action. Let's start with the historic, first of all. It was just town women's team. Historic because they played on the turf of Portman Road for the first time. And 10,000 plus, Mr. Phillips, were at Portman Road to see it. And they won 5-0. Great, great occasion. It was great. My, uh, Mike Woods was there. He was sending me the updates um, from the stadium. Yeah, 10,173. Annoyingly, you can't watch the highlights unless you're a subscriber to Town TV. But it was so, on Town TV, though. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so you could, I don't know what you could pay for it, but what was it? No, it, was five free. Get... it was free. Can we now watch it? Do you message me saying I'm watching the, women, the oh, women's team? Fantastic. I've, I said, if I've... you're free, why don't you go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've just watched the, um, the, the Town in Five. So they did like 12, 15 minutes on it. Oh, did they? Nice. Yeah, 
yeah, really good. Um, and look, I was so pleased for, for Joe Sheen because, like, when we started this podcast, we had him on quite early doors, didn't we? I think in, we in, did, yeah. Uh, and we've had Elo, uh, we've had uh, Eloise King, yeah, uh, we've had Natasha Thomas, yeah, yeah, we've had a, a, a... Two, I think, yeah, yes, the first goal scorer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they were yeah, delighted, she's dynamite. And, yeah, but it was, it was brilliant. Look, they were playing absolute dross, Chatham. But they must have been playing traffic cones. But I mean, look, what what perfect way then to 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 debut at Portman Road and against a team like that, Chatham Town, and, and win five 0 So I was delighted for them because look, they've put in hard yards. It's difficult, isn't it, to be the, mm. the women's team, regardless of level. I mean, it's not only recently that Man United started having a women's team, biggest one of the biggest clubs on in the on the globe. Absolutely. So yeah, you know, for what they've done behind the scenes, at Ipswich to be able to. You know, to bring them in from the from Felix though to Gold Star Ground and play and get them in at Portman Road is great. What made, did make me laugh was when Mark Ashton walks into the dressing room on like the the town in five and goes, "I just want a quick two minutes." I reckon half hour later they were still there, but it was good that it was good that he he went in there and um, you know, it was just a good vibe and I was I was I was pleased for all of them because um, it was great. He went in there, Matt, and he gave them all oxygen. All right, <laughs> that was the yeah, first yeah. word. On you need the oxygen. Press- you, you need, need oxygen. oxygen. Because that was obviously the buzzword in the in the big announcement yeah. on Friday. It felt yeah, like the yeah. buzzword for me because everyone needed oxygen. You needed oxygen. The club needed oxygen. They needed but, they needed more oxygen than the scuba diving school, Martin, to do their they job. They certainly did. Kieran McKenna needs that. oxygen. Ed Schwartz needs oxygen. Ed Sheeran needs oxygen. But that, that, that was my uh, sledgehammer approach of a segue um, into yeah. the bright part. Make us, that bright made future. It's a bright future at Portman Road, ladies and gentlemen. Um, James says, did I see the 2022-23? I did, because you sent it to me. And then I've been looking into that. You know, me and my facts and figures. Oh, you love all this, don't you? You love all this. 18 million loss. What are you thinking about that then? Ah, it's cost of promotion. To be expected. <laughs> yeah, would, yeah, to be expected. Yeah. Would have been 17 if we went for Plymouth. I mean, you know, that's what probably what Plymouth fans are going to tell us, right? Because you won the title, you would have been 17. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All those all, all those jabs coming it's out. But no. Yeah. no, I'm still going through it. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll go through it in more detail, I'm sure, as we go through. We've got such to cover. Uh, Kieran says it was a long weekend just because Talking Town wasn't on. Kieran, we love you for that comment. We'll, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll pay, you, pay you a £20 fee yeah, this week. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, great so comment coming in. Of course, somebody in the chat has said such a busy weekend, including Leicester with the FFP. So much has gone on. So, um, they, so they're only going to drop points if they get promoted, right? They ain't going to lose oh, points in the Football League. It's nonsense. It's, they might as well just stay down because if you're going up, they're going to start on minus points anyway. They'll be as good yeah, as relegated. How can you don't? Can, I, I've I've not looked into this as much as I've looked into the facts and the figures and other things. But how can you dock Forest and Everton points in the same season, but yet you can't dock a team that just because they've been relegated? Broken, it, they, they've not moved country. They're not playing in Gibraltar this year. <laughs> yeah. So like, they've broken okay. Premier. I suppose they've broken Premier League rules, haven't they? And they're no longer a Premier League club. Therefore, when they do go back, if they do go back. Um, then they'd have to accept their punishment, I suppose. But, but is it, you know... It just highlights to me. I, I was trying to keep you off at, at, the, at the wedding I was at, at the, at the weekend, and he was saying, you know, that everyone in the league, or certainly himself, is just wanting us to do this because we are going to gate crash. We're going to break up the, monot- you know, the, the, the parachute payment clubs. And if we can't do it, he honestly can't see a, t- a team doing it in the next next five five or so years. This is This is the best chance to really... Other than a Luton fairy tale, um, but certainly a top two finish. And then you've got the Leicester situation where it's, I know it's different rules, but this highlights the whole lack of joined up thinking between one league to the next. It's not even you're talking, they've dropped three leagues and we're talking well, three years ago and it was th- three yeah. divisions up. It, this should be joined up thinking, should it not? Well, it, well mm, it's competition rules, I suppose, and they're different competitions. But I love how they fast track a lot of these clubs through, like oh, like the the Forest one, the Everton one, Leicester, Man City sitting on 115 charges. That's still rumbling away. God knows how many yeah. years down the line that is. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, it's going to be a. If you're a Leicester City fan, it's going to be a blow because you've had a great season. You've been top pretty much all season, other than you know when we were there uh, on the odd occasion. But the the reality remains that if you get promoted, you are going to be starting on minus points. Come the start of the season in August. What that would look like, I don't know. Well, and good job for them. They're not going up, innit? Good job for them. They're not well, going you, up. You were very buoyant about two. this, weren't you? You were very buoyant about this. Two. I mean, just how, how, before we get onto the bright path, etc. we've got uh, yeah. ITFC Beard waiting, we've got Colin waiting, just before we get onto the bright path. That's how ironic that you've broken the rules in the year you've got relegated. <laughs> Bravo, <laughs> lads. 
did yeah. well there, didn't you? <laughs> that went well. Um, and then you've got does it? And you, I know it's different rules, but it does affect their their play this year, surely, because the um, the, the team they assembled, by and large, yeah, is the team they was destroying the division with. I mean, I, su I suppose it will come down to whether or not how, how professional they can stay on the pitch and still target a top two finish. Look, we had Crystal Ball Chandler on our last show, didn't we? He said we Leeds would, would overtake them and we would and we would pick Leicester and they would finish third and we would finish second. I'll take that now. But um so would I. listen, they still yeah, got they still good players. They they, they they still want to have a good season. Who even knows what kind of points total they might even start next? I mean, look, look what did Everson get? Minus six and it changed to minus five or something, Darth? Yeah, and then Forrest got four, was it? So they're not, they're not huge, you know, they're not talking minus 12 here, like Sheffield Wednesday got. No, That's no, certainly time. not. No. And, and, and you know what? I don't, I, I kind of, I, I want them to, but I actually don't want them to get deducted points. Because when, when I finish, well, when we, it's not I, finish inside the top two, don't taint it for me. Don't taint it for us. <laughs> don't say forevermore that, oh, they only finished top two because Leicester got a deduction of points. This is a fairy tale season. Don't go putting a spoiler on the end of it. You don't Leicester. want uh, you, you don't keep your points. Yeah. You don't nah, Leicester nah, nah, nah. to Leicester. Never. You keep I'll your points. I'll take whatever, quite frankly. <laughs> I, well, yeah. The fan of me thinks, uh, the other side of me goes, yeah, but then, you know, any way well, you not, can get up. You know, they're not on the, the they're, they're not been on the greatest run, have they, Leicester, particularly? Um, no. So let's see. I mean, look, we're, we're in single digit games now until the end of the season. So let's see, let's see what happens. But it's still, you know, uh, we can't control anything the leads that do what Leicester do. So, I mean, let's just control them what we're doing. Absolutely. All right. So, on Friday night, it was announced by Manchester Town Football Club. Mark Ashton was in the, was in the studio with James Pierce, um, And it's thoughts from the ORG group, which is obviously the Arizona Public Safety Personnel Retirement System. Um, And then they had uh, two of the new... Um, Investors, Minor minority investors. Yeah, and he said, and then he said owners, but they're not. They're the mon minority investors. Oh, well, not well. The second largest. Um, yeah. Obviously, the, the the three lions have still got their ten percent because Bright Path, the US based private e private equity firm, uh, invested one hundred and five million to secure forty percent stake in the club, uh, and the club says it's an exciting step that provides oxygen, etc. Uh, <laughs> etc. Et um, there's that word oh, again. God. You'll yeah. hear it again. You heard it again and again. Uh, what are your thoughts on this thing? Obviously, I wasn't expecting it. You weren't expecting it. I wasn't. You know, was anyone? Um, was anyone expecting this to well, land? I'm sure there's some ITK somewhere, somewhere around the. You didn't know. Was... Well, if you knew, you didn't tell me. You've been ITK before, and our usual ITK correspondent, Sunning, is in, in Jamaica. So that's why no one knew because he couldn't get to the Twitter mobile. <laughs> he couldn't tweet. He's about gone all it. inclusive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's still on Selena Saga. Um, I mean, I, I first heard the news when David Bergen, friend of the show, uh, from Dublin, sent me a screenshot with the announcement from town. I was like, what the hell is this? I mean, it literally was out of the blue, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. This, it was out of the blue, but it's exciting for the football club. You know, Bright Park it obviously leads itself to yes. a brighter future. Uh, because I'm surprised no one actually picked up on in the in, in, in the announcement. I would have I well, gone with this. Because it's a bit of a cliche, Martin, quite frankly. But never well, mind. but oxygen, hang on, but oxygen isn't. <laughs> yeah. If we're doing yeah. buzzwords, mate, let's get the bright, <laughs> the brighter future involved here. That's, that's bright path of giving us bright path of giving us air to breathe. And clear future. skies. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Might be a lot of oxygen in the interest at the moment. Um, yeah, so exciting stuff. 105, 104, 105. Up to 100. It's not 105 straight in on the table, is it? It's up to 105 over a certain amount of years, is what I was. I kind of read it. The problem is, it's very complex. Like they did their best on the Tay on TV, didn't they? James Peace is a like, friend of ours. Uh, they did their best to explain it, but it's bloody complicated, isn't it? To laymen like mm -hmm. ourselves, if you're not, work, you know, if you don't work in finance or part of like private, private equity experts or anything. Mm. But look, you can't argue. Look, I'm com like I said to you on the phone, but newsflash already. Martin video called me earlier. I thought he's, I he'd, he'd already pocket dialed me by mistake. Therefore, I, I thought this was another one. What an idiot. Twice in one day. But actually, you did want to talk to me, didn't you? About the change of time. For, for once, yeah, for the change of time, because I've got a yeah. rather important stuff going on at Harper State. But yeah. um, Rob Holmes says, OSG, OSG, he thinks OSG, but I think he means OSG. Shares, shares went up quickly. Bought club for 40 million, now about over 250 and two and a half. I mean, I want them having my pension pot. Can I move it? Because that, that <laughs> yeah, sounds like yeah. some good investments <laughs> going right. I, I said to you on that call, wasn't I? I'm, I'm a little bit 
you know, this is the purest in me. I'm a little, look, this got me into trouble before. Uh, you know, McKenna, <laughs> not doing a good enough job, get gone, all that kind of stuff. But um, the purest, look, look, it's exciting. One half of me thinks this is exciting. Money it's coming into this town. And, you know, we've spent years dormant doing bloody nothing under the Mark of Evans era. You know, Portman Road gone to rack and ruin. So, so suddenly become an investable option is very exciting. But the purest in me is like, bloody hell, these people have come to the table now because they view, view us as a commodity, like this can of Coke or whatever. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> that Jake Zanow and Sam Simon seem very nice people on, on, on the call. But yeah. they were like, well, we, we looked through clubs around the world and then we stopped looking and we found you. Oh, okay, I'm not a can of beans. But... Um, you know, you are. Is, You're all lined that, up in the shelves, you know, Leicester, Millwall, Ipswich, you know, you, you yeah, just go through just, it until you find the one you want. It's just people come into the table. Look, we live, look, we've got, we say all the time, don't we? Blue and white, DNA. We live and breathe Ipswich. Is why we do this podcast. It, that you know, oxygen. It, it, it's our oxygen, right? I mean, and we've done it for years and years and years. There it goes. And, the, you know, and, and that's why we support the town. And these people have sort of just come in because they want to make a pound note, basically. I mean, that's, that's what they're in Nothing for. wrong with that. Not, this is 2024. Matthew. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You know, the, so that's the, why I'm that's why I'm conflicted a little bit because you know they just view us as something that is a money making machine for them, and you know it's slightly different for me from when from when Game Changer come in and the PSPRS guys because they, like I said earlier, we were dormant, we were going nowhere. Marcus Evans was just like treading water. He'd invested a lot of money into Keane, etc., and then that hadn't worked out, and it was just like. We were just going nowhere. In fact, we were probably heading to League Two. Is probably where we were, we were going. We, yeah, I we mean, were heading to clubs of our game. size, like P Portsmouth, for example, have done exactly that. Um, yeah. And bloody hell, look at Oldham. Once in the Premier League, now in the non-league. So I've always said, with ownership, there for the grace of God, go away. You just, you know. I mean, yeah, this is modern football, man. This is, you know, the, the days yeah. of the cobbles and 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 the the crisis being the wine, the boardroom drying up. They're gone. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're never going to be gone. Back. That's the, yes, that's this is what it is now. And doesn't this, 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 isn't this, um, this is a testament. This is a, a statement, you know, behind the scenes, I'm sure they're all giving themselves, you know, pats on the back because it's, it's, it's also a sign for what they've how, done, but more so, well for a, done, yeah. But as a fan, it's a testament to actually, it isn't just ourselves, it isn't just the, the current owners who you feel have to be buoyant. The outside world are also viewing Ipswich Town Football Club through the lens of this is a club going places, Shows this is something, done. something yeah. worth investing in. Then there's exciting times just around the corner, whether not whether that be this year, next year, because yeah. you're right, they want to make their money back. Of course they do, as I'm sure the pension fund wants to make and their money back. And slightly, I feel like the P PSPRS was slightly different in that, like I say, we were dormant. We'd be like, you know, Castaway, Tom Hanks film, where he's like floating around in that dinghy and he tried to escape with the, the with the bull, with the bull. Um, Wilson, oh, the bull was... Wilson, come back. <laughs> Oxygen. <laughs> Right, I know. <laughs> so yeah, so we were float when game changer come along. We were floating around in the Marcus Sevens dinghy, and then there's that moment, isn't there, when he like wakes up in the sun, and then that huge like cruise liner comes past and saves him. And that's exactly what game changer was for us. Captain Brett Johnson with the shades on, jump aboard, boys. We're going to save you. And it, they took a chance on us because they recognised that we was the sleeping giant and you know the stately home of English football might in the sky. Called us that mm -hmm. time, which I loved and you hated. But um, yeah. they because we were bad. Just being beat by Swindon, by the way. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Swindon game was that, wasn't it? Yeah, I can tell. Scott Twine, worldy. Scott so Twine, yeah. We we was in that we was in that space, and they were so invested in us. Look, we've had Brett, we've had Brett on, we've had Mark Detmer on, we've had Burke on, and they were so warm, and we and we've loved them. And it feels like Sam Simon and Jake Zanet have sort of come to the party sort of late on and gone. Hey, <laughs> we got some money here. Can we join? No, in? they've come to tip you over the edge because you know well, coming yes, out of, coming out well. of this news, you've got the I training that. ground, which obviously is very exciting. That is really exciting, yeah. And the academy, gonna, yeah. And this is where I was going next: the Category One Academy, which, which was an outrage when it was decided this club wouldn't have a Cat One Academy, and rightfully so. I, I remember the fans not being happy then. But this is well, great news, isn't it? This were, club's going to have a Cat yeah, One yeah, Academy yeah. back I mean, for the first time yes. in whatever. Well, as much as I'm not a fan of, you know, people just coming in trying to make money off the back of us, but that's business, but that's the purest in me, okay? But, yeah, that's very exciting. The, a, a training ground revamp and the Category 1 Academy, which obviously Norwich have got from their time in the Premier League. I wish we could have done it with Premier League money, but it's, it is. But, but what's the difference between, you know, a bit of investment before you get there and the Premier League? It's still money. You, you, everything is money in football now, man. We've got it. 
and we're Mate. bringing we're bringing more wheelbarrows in. We've just backed another Brinks truck up to the to the club. Just <laughs> unload yeah, the yeah. hundred dollar bills, you know. Just keep them flying through the door. I suppose Norwich have done it in the purest way through success and getting to the Premier League, and they've got. Oh, you know, don't give what, me that. No, no. I mean, no, what? Have, I don't want that. What are clubs sharing out a TV broadcast deal now in the Premier League? What is it? Two point five billion across twenty clubs. That's what twenty five million a year. But that's the investment, right? That, that's, it, that, that, that's the wrong game. That's the investment, isn't it? That's the investment. Look, it don't matter what I think. I mean, I was sat there watching the interview thinking to myself, Ed Schwartz and Mark Ashton. And I give Ashton a lot of shit on this show because I think he's a bit David Brent. And the day, and the oxygen thing kind of backs it up. But he's one of the greatest signings we've ever had at this club. I mean, look at look how far we've come in two, three years since when we had Burke, the first three lions to come on the show. And what a great show. Go, go back and watch it in the archive. You've watched it three years back. Almost three, mm. almost three years ago to the day, I suppose. Well, it was April, wasn't it, I think? Um, it was a great show and the optimism there, and we were so excited. And, and now you're seeing the next evolution of that. It was obviously always their plan to bring in some kind of, of course, venture capital funding. I thought so, yeah. Um, and listen, it's quite clever, isn't it? Why spend your own money when you can spend somebody else's? It just happens to cost them 40% of the cup, but they're still the 50% share. The free lines still have the, the, the 10%. Um, so They've yeah, also I'm, increased I'm, their investment. By the way, it was yeah, it was yeah, absolutely. The press conference, so yeah, everyone's absolutely. on board with this, and yeah, and I, and I, I like it when people put their money where their mouth is because it means they're invested. It means they're here, and they're not just sort of paying lip service to it. They're they're actually wanting to get something out of this, and you only get something out of it by being a part of the big table. You don't do it by rubbing yeah. shoulders with Gillingham and Shrewsbury. No disrespect. You yeah. don't even do it yeah. rubbing shoulders with Sunderland and Preston North End. You only do it by rubbing shoulders with your Man United, your Liverpools, your Man Cities, you know, those football clubs. Because then your football club is is on the global scale. It's on the global model. Uh, and with yeah. TV revenue, you know, TV ratings are falling off left, right and centre. The only thing advertisers love to cling on to is live sport because it's the only thing you have to be there to watch and be a part of the moment. And advertisers love it. So, of course, the TV revenue will continue just to go up and up and up. It's, it's big money business now. Yeah. Well, look, we're, we're, we're transitioning from that club in League One. We, you know, this is our compromise. Time. I didn't want to be in League One in the first place. This is the position I wanted to be in, but probably not with overseas money. But there we go. I want you're you to just, be Premier you're League You're a money. purist. You're a purist. Yeah, you're this just, is the issue. Yeah. You, 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 you want some distant cobble to rock up with his I mean, with the with your, now. foreign <laughs> yeah. money heist and saying, here, here's yeah. the money. Here's the yeah. money. Yeah, I know. I know, I know what you want. Well, sheep shanks. Sheep shakes won the lottery and goes, here's 200 mil. You need the Euro Minions lottery, not, not the normal lottery <laughs> yeah. for that one, mate. But, yeah. um, but no, but great to have it, that it, one, Academy. Yeah. Back. Or we'll be but back. Let's, you know, while we do slate the Evans era, just dial back a, a, a decade ago, less than that. I mean, Simon Milton kind of led that charge to try and get Category 1 status. Um, and I think they were trying to do it on a shoestring. I don't know if Evans had put money in or they were asking people to actually donate into the cause of becoming a... Well, a you know, they one. decided originally, if memory serves me correctly, Matt, to go for a Cat 2 Academy. They then decided to try and go for the judgment for the Cat 1. Yeah. Fouled on a couple of... Uh, they missed uh, out by 0.3 of a percent. I mean, Simon Milton done a fantastic job, but that's how harsh it was in terms of how good you had to be. But to get a Cat... Back at the FA, F, FA I remember the elite player performance plan coming through, which is what Trevor Brooking was kind of driving, which kind of screwed us up a little bit because it then stopped. It, 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 it stopped kids in our academy being able to go to Man United or Manchester City because you had to be within a certain, certain commutable distance. Mm -hmm. And when the EPP came through, it meant that Ben Knight could go to Manchester City. So, I mean, look, it screwed us up a little bit, but it was only because we weren't part of that Category 1 mm -hmm. um, the culture. But we're going to be in there. We're going to be there in the future, which is, is great news. Look, we've said before, who are the kids coming through at the moment? Elkin Bagger has come through. Cameron, Cameron Humphries is coming through. Who really is who really is behind them? I couldn't really name you any names other than uh, Big Gerard, who we've had on the bench this season, out of needs must. So, you know, we want to see kind of Luke Hyams, Luke Wolfenden's, uh, you know, a Richard Wright coming through. You know, he does feel like, you know, I think if Rich was here, he would agree with me. It does feel like that kind of convey about a young talent. Your Kieran Dyers and, the, and Darren Bents and, and the like have, uh, have stopped coming through. Nico Valentin says uh, Matt Stanner, but I think you're right. Yes, and, and the only yeah. way, uh, and, and, and in the FFP world, the only way you make your business, your football club, makes money is by selling those young players through and or being able to right. keep hold of them and build, 
around yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah yeah if you can if you can play a trade with players you've already put money into and brought up through the ranks yeah. instead of going to buy a Connor Chaplin for example for one and a half and then selling him on yeah and and right. as you go yeah but as you go heart the pyramid the Connor Chaplins aren't one and a half million they're they're five million they're eight million they're ten and it gets you know it gets bigger and, and, and bigger of course and um yeah, just exciting stuff to hear about the, the Category 1 Academy. Uh, Charlie said that 105 million would be very useful. We get promoted. Uh, Norman says, could the uh, new investors open commercial markets in the US? Could really open up our... That's well, the thing, you see. New new voices around the table, new ideas, also new skills. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, what are we seeing? Um, we're, American owners come in. More American investments come in through. I mean, look, it's just like, you know, it's just a breeding ground, isn't it? I mean, look, we're not getting 105 flat, are we? I mean, it's going to be over, oh, what, no. four or five years or whatever? And it's up, let's not forget, it's up to 105 million. So, I mean, look, you 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 might get 20 million one year, 40 another. I don't know how they're going to kind of to do that. And like you said, you know, before we went live, Martin, you know, exactly where is this money going to be going? Because the training ground, as you rightly said, hey, ain't going to cost 100 million, is it? I wouldn't have no, thought. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> Depends no, what kind no, of tech no. they got in there. So just, does the Cobalt then become part of this plan moving forward in terms of infrastructure? Because he Ashton did say, didn't he, it's in infrastructure development and we're thinking it's training ground. But four or five years down the line, is, is the Cobalt going to be involved in that? I mean, I think you'd have to be a mainstay Premier League club before you start buggering about with the stadium. We've been down that path before. Got relegated. <laughs> well, I think so, yeah. But it certainly yes, it, it allows these. Do you think, before I bring in ICSC, but do you think they sent Mark Ashton in, like Dragon's Den style? Go and pitch the football club, Mark. Well, I mean, look, that 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 so Sam Simon. Inve- like, a whole room full of investments. that's just got a walk in or name badge on. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm from Shistown Football Club. Yeah, club. yeah. Club, I want you to try well, and buy into He said, if you go on his websites, I mean, look, he's made his money in oil, actually, at the soil. So this Simon Sports thing, which seems to be a vehicle for his son, uh, they seem to have made a few very small investments in, like, the Halifax Mooseheads hockey team. Which okay. looks like a child's team to me. I don't know. What, I don't know what that level that is. It certainly ain't. It, you know, it's chalk and cheese compared to Ipswich Town FC. So they've obviously dipped their water, dipped the water, dipped their toes in the water to in sports. But their money is really from distribution of oil. Um, so he's obviously a very good businessman. And look, James Pierce alluded on the Town TV interview, didn't he? He's Sam Simon. Uh, he's kind of living the American dream. I think he fled Iraq. He's from Armenian heritage. Went to the states with nothing. You know. He's now investing in Ipswich Town Football Club. So, I mean, look, fair, you know, you know, even as much as I don't like the reasons he's here, he's going to be sitting on our board and he's done very well for himself. And, um, so miserable you are. Uh, Max Facts, <laughs> down next announcement with a Kenner contract extension and uh, 105 million over five. <laughs> yeah, is years. that what you pay? Yeah. <laughs> but it's worth McSwordsman. We're currently losing over 20 million a year. We'll torch that 100 million under five years just running the club. Yeah, but I don't think, unless you're, you know, a man, you're not a man city, I don't think you're ever going to see a football club ever make a profit. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Football is its own little beast. It's its own little thing. It doesn't oh, make profit. Loads, it's it? just about mitigating the losses. That's there's, what it's there's, about. There's clubs with worse, worse deficits than what Wilkinson and Bodisher. That yeah, 20 million will be a much, on high street. Yeah, but that yeah. 20 million will be much higher next year when the accounts for the championship come out. Well, I, su- I suppose, like, if you're floating around I'd 18... Yeah, I mean, look, if you're floating around an 18 million loss, then surely this money is just going to keep them on an even kill, just make that slightly smaller. But it seems to me it's going to get invested in off, off-field activities, of which we know the academy is going to be one. We know the training ground is going to be one. Presumably, the Cobalt will be one at some point. But, I mean, I think that might be a little bit further down the line. What's, Harry, what's, Matt's a purist. Yeah. He wants a billionaire. No, no, no. What Matt wants what Jim Radcliffe. <laughs> is Mr. O'Leary to be in charge. for Because this, is, oh this is what he sent me. This oh was his God. takeaway moment yeah. from the whole evening. Yeah. Forget the millions, Martin. Look at that box file set up. That is unbelievable to me. I mean, has I anyone told it. Mike O'Leary that there's a cloud? He can put everything digitally? It's a hard drive. So stick it, it on was, the drive. It was just, I, was, I couldn't concentrate on the millions after that. I used to work oh, on the box file aisle at Staples back in the day. Did you? And uh, yeah, look, it got me all misty eyed and nostalgic. But Are look you at that. Pressed, what to Polly Pockets? I got upgraded to front of house because I was so personable with customers. Oh, it's your meet and greeter. Really? Hello, welcome to Staples. Jiffy bags? Oh, oh one. Are Staples still going? I don't think they are, you know. Not in the Lots UK, I don't think. <laughs> in the States, thing. maybe. They viewed you as enough. a front of house welcomer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used, to, I used to be good at those jobs, that. I was a waiter, I've been a barman. People love me on here. I never what get excited on here, do I? 
What do you want? What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? Hurry up. We're Don't make your cash fine. round here. We don't want you. Look, just say it now. But no, it is commitment. Look at this. I mean, I wonder if he does it all himself because that, that's that that's some dedicated hours. I mean, look, you've got at least if you're listening to this, it's a it's a middle row of of shelving with box bowls on, and then there's a bottom row. But he's then, there's still. A, but it's, it's I do like Mike O'Leary. I mean, look, he, uh, Rich Way says he reminds me of the Cobbles. I don't think he's really that kind of character. But what he does, it's kind of just he's like a he's like he sort of steadies the ship a little bit. He explains it to you in black and white. This is what's going on. This is how the board's going to work. We don't want too many people on the board, he said, didn't we? We don't want more than eight people on the board. These guys are coming on, and this is that. I mean, he just gives it a nice, calming, you know, he just makes you feel chilled and relaxed. Yeah. Like it, no, if, he does, you know, yeah. No, he, he does. And, and he's obviously got a lot of time for reading as well, because that bookshelf above is equally yeah, as full. Yeah. Yeah, really, Do you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, what so, an office setup. I can, you can only aspire to it. Shout if you saw behind own. this green screen, Ladies I dread to think what's behind there. Well, it's your washing, isn't it, normally? It is. Yeah, it's my, <laughs> it's my Manscaped pants. Um, still 10% yeah. off, by the way, when you use the code TT. I think. I don't know. Try it and let me, let me know. You've, um, you've never but, delivered those to me, Rich, have you? The Manscapes? No. I'm using them all. I'm using all the products. <laughs> not just, just not on my face, clearly. <laughs> um, yeah. Right, we're bringing ICFC Beard, who also clearly hasn't used Manscaped products on his face. Um <laughs> With a beard that that beard, my friend. Oh, are you an owner of a football club with a beard like that? Wow. He's a great beard. I should be, right? Viking style. Yes, yeah, good. Scandinavian. I like it. Very good. Hey. I've not spoke to you before. Welcome in. How are you? You're welcome. welcome. Well, I've been, been in the chat, long time listener. First time uh, contributing, I guess. Brilliant. It's nice. great to have you. Great to have welcome. you. So exciting times at football club. One weekend yeah. and suddenly it's all gone mad. What, what are your takeaways from everything? I'm ex top pitches, uh, Stephen. Um, yeah, so um, I'm excited about this money. I do believe what you were saying, Matt, about the, I think it's purely going to be um, infrastructure and it's going to be dribbled yeah. for over the next God knows how many years. So I, I that's where I, I took away from the interviews that is purely going to be upgrading the town around us. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like it, yeah. that's where that money's going to go. I was uh, bit, seeing all these... Um, at, you know things about Amari being valued at twenty million, and we're going to go for him when we go get up. That's interesting. <laughs> so, would you go for him at twenty million pounds, or would that be would, would that be a, a player? I, don't, I still don't know that he's he's at that value yet. I I don't get me wrong. I think he's amazing, but twenty million when you look at what we've got around us, is he worth twenty million? Don't know. It's not a dough for us. I've, I've recorded four point five million at the moment. That's yeah, times really. I don't. I've been watching the um, Nigerian national team because Findy George is the manager now, isn't he? Is he really? Yeah, Findy George is, is, wow. is the interim manager. So I've been watching that. <laughs> so yeah, I loved uh, Fanidi. gets a bad rap. I loved Fanidi. I mean, he scored some of the greatest goals I've ever seen. Overhead kick. I've got his name like, on the back of this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> really? Overhead yeah. kick. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, my the, name's George as well, so it's kind of dual purpose. Oh, there you go. <laughs> The no, Sunderland but, goal, that Sunderland goal, New Year's. I, I was there on his debut at home, and yeah, Love so uh, ever since then, oh. I was just like, Yeah, he Brilliant. ripped Derby apart. And, and I, I suppose on the Amari sort of theme, you've got a young player there that's Chelsea's. This category one academy sort of opens the door for us to, to bring our own players through that are going to be, you no, know, hopefully one day, the ability and the level of a young Amari Hutchinson, where you've got the ability to not only attract the, the best players, but then you don't lose them to a city, yeah. to a Chelsea, through the lack of uh, higher status. That's a really good way of looking at the investment, I guess. Yeah. Like I said, I think Amari has got the potential to be, you know, sky's the limit. I think we're only scratching at the surface, but is he there yet? Is it like a, is he having a one season wonder? Like he's still completely unproven. Like he's in a very good team that's given him a lot of support under an amazing manager that has given him the tools to do it. But is he going to be able to cut it in the Premier League? It's good. It's, it, that's the thing, though. Are you um, are you paying for potential or the or, or the finished product with 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 not just with with Amari George, but yeah. with players in general in football? I think players in know, general. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're hundred percent correct. Like we've been very frugal. And I think we've done amazing with the purchases that we've done you know leave what just over a mil you know and now you know he's worth at least 20 million of anyone's money so yeah. if, more. <laughs> if if not more yeah if you know that valuation is going to go up if we do get promoted 
you know, with all the clubs sniffing around him at the moment. And, you know, he's definitely going to be future England. They need just someone like that the other night. That was dreadful. Well, doesn't that just show the, the, the snobbery, though, that, that, that exists still? You know, you, in, yeah. you know, championships, what? The top fifth, five or sixth league in Europe? You've got a left back there who's playing in, in, in the championship. But because, but because he's playing in the championship, he doesn't get a look into the England team. That's, that's a yeah. major snobbery still. It's like he, he should be in that setup. All right, maybe not starting, but certainly a part of the, the group. But you could have said that, you know, going back years, though, isn't it? when we've had like Darren Bent coming through and he mm. kind of got passed over, you know, because he wasn't at one of the big clubs, mm. you know, even though he was the top goal scorer in the Premier League that time, you know, it's Marcus just like Stewart. Marcus Stewart, yeah. the same. I think he means Marcus Stewart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's one of those. It's, it's, it, I just don't know why it's still it's still a thing. Like you think the left back, as you, as you mentioned, George, George, Blackburn, the before I let you go, Blackburn, the horizon. Are you confident for it? Yeah, it's going to be a 2-1. Um, yeah, it's going to, Moore's going to get two goals. Love it. Love it, George. Where are we going to, fi- we, go we going to finish, George? Top two? Or are we playoffs? Go what do you think? Go on. Go on. I think go we're going to go... I want, obviously, the dream is, but I just can't see Leicester going to... I think they're going to bounce back. And that, that, yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to push it to the end, though. I know we are. So it's going to be between us and Leicester. Leeds are going to just... They're going to bounce up and they're just going to get... So it's going to be between the us and... You yeah, I think Leeds yeah. are going to win the title. Looks that way, doesn't it, at the moment? Yeah. Even though I hate the fans on uh, social media, I hate the fans. They're so weird on the social media. But I'm sure they're not all like that. <laughs> no, the ones, the ones I've come across. But <laughs> Yeah. Have you seen our fans on social media, by the way? Let's no, no, there, see, all, I see, all I see is all the uh, all, um, new Iraqi fans. I love them, honestly. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, they're yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Following Ali, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. George, appreciate <laughs> you coming on. Hope to have you on again soon. Yeah, Do not right, anytime, anytime. Yes, yeah. Click Take it easy, boys. Time. All See the ya. best. That's another thing, though. QPR fan was telling me on Saturday that there's this little image about our football club, Matt, that we spent some money. Like, oh, you spent some money, though, didn't you? Yeah. Chip No. Nope. No. Nope. Pompey. No. no. Who? <laughs> Let's have blinked and missed big, big money. Like, Leafs, one and a half million. I mean, we're talking, yeah. talking big money in the championship. And that was last year in League One. Yeah. So I was like, I shut him down straight away. I was like, no. <laughs> No. The <laughs> it's a team of free- like, but this is the thing. Like, I don't know what to talk about this. It was doing after we had the, had the chat at the the wedding breakfast, as they like to call it, dinner for me. Why do they um, call it a wedding breakfast? I don't get oh, it. I, I mean, if you can have a wedding breakfast, have a fry up, or make it bigger portions. Either way, anyway, I'm not moaning. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. I'm not moaning. I'm not moaning. But where's this? <laughs> where, where's our Bournemouth fairy tale narrative? Like Bournemouth, oh, yeah. this big fairy tale narrative about them. Yeah. Where's ours? Why well, are we could, being well, viewed I mean, through the lens of? But where's the fairy tale? This is well, a fairy could, tale, damn it! You may you may still get the fairy tale if we get promoted. You have got to get promoted first. That's the end. That's the oh, last page, isn't it? I remember the whole run up for Bournemouth to get promoted. It was oh, can they complete the fairy tale? It's all this. It's all that. What a dream! Rags well, to riches. Eddie Howe's guided yeah. them from playing the dog yeah. and duck on a Sunday afternoon. The vets league to uh, three stands. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was it well it was a load of bullshit anyway, wasn't it? Because they broke financial fair play, got that Ken Win Jones in to get him over the line, then they had to pay what a fine or whatever. But um look, we're doing it I in don't... the purest way. We're doing it in the purest way that I like. An untried uh, manager, McKenna. We're getting the, written we're off getting by Matt Phillips. We're getting the checkbook out and we're spending <laughs> uh one and a half on leaf, less than a million on George Hurst. Oh, massive sums in 2024, that isn't it? I mean, you know, just we're doing, it, we're doing it in a great way. I mean, look, and, and with, we're, look, we're on the cusp of the Premier League within three years of, of Game Changer. Don't get started on Bleeding Maidstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to spoil it, James. Yeah, to mention Maidstone. I feel a cup of tea coming on, Martin, let alone this, this, co- this coke I'm drinking. Um, look, we're doing it in a great way. Who would have thought three, within three years we'd be sitting third in the, uh, in the Championship or in the Premier League? No one thought that at all. In no, no one thought no I one don't thought even that. think Game Changer probably thought that. But like I said earlier, you know, M- M- McKenna come in untried. I didn't think he was going to cut the mustard after that Bristol Rovers game. Could only see us slipping down the table. Sheffield Wednesday got further away. He turns it around and, he, and here we are. Brilliant. See? I love Sean's, it. Sean's getting the vibe. Back to back pressure with Wrexham. But all the headlines will be the well, fairy tale Wrexham. That's different. That's Hollywood money. Ryan Reynolds. That, you know, that gets you, that gets you a documentary on Disney Plus when you go in Hollywood. That's true. We should have That's got Schwarzenegger true. to invest in us. <laughs> and then we're doing going places. Yeah. Uh, Greg says, uh, this FFP business is very complicated. Greg, any questions, drop it in the chat. Because I, 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 I want to say I'm an expert on FFP. But I, think I've got a very, I think I've got a very good understanding of how it works and the intricacies. 
Um, and anything I don't know, I will look into my, not into my Mike O'Leary style file, filing cabinet, but into my big black book where I've written things down and, and made several notes, etc. Is Here's a, here's a question for you, Martin. So oh, we've God, got, the, we've got the investment got the investment coming in. Say we don't go up this season, right? Worst case yeah. scenario. Touch wood, it don't happen. But say it does happen, right? Because there's other teams, there's other teams vying for that for, for the Premier League as well, along with us. No, no, n- none of them are us. But go on. But none of them are us, right? Not the town. Do you still see Ipswich being competitive next season to the level that we're at at the moment? Oh golly! Um, because we're probably going to lose uh, Davis, for example. It's a big, it's the most it's a big asset, ask. Right? It's, it's a big ask. Isn't it? Let's be it would be a it, is a, it is a fairy tale. It is an anonymous, it is a a fairy tale season. Is it is a purple patch in the sense of very rarely the teams come from the league below and, and have such a uh, an amazing amazing yeah, season as, as we are. Norwich have done it. Southampton have done it. I can't name many others. Certainly, the a top, yeah. and, and then you're all. I mean, then you you are relying on player form, player injuries. I mean, it's a very difficult question to ask. That I mean, you want to say yes naturally as a town fan, but. Is McKenna still in charge? If he is, top five, absolutely. But top three, with with with, with two more power. Because you know, don't forget, if if one of these teams, well, two teams potentially with parachute money will not get promoted, right? So that's mm. two teams next year with parachute money. Three more are going to join the pie. So that's mm. five already. Then you've got teams that are going to be good again, like Coventry. You expect them to be another, another, you know, top six, top eight team. Competing again, they're competing again after losing out to Luton at Wembley. Exactly. I Will Borough be as bad under Carrick? Possibly yeah. not. Like there's so many different things that you say. Oh, that you. I you just, just I know. just, I just like the timing of how this investments come in because, say, worst case scenario is we do stay in the championship. At least people will now see that there's money coming into the club on things that are going to benefit the club long term. The academy, mm-hmm. the trading ground. So even though you've got, say, you had the blow of not going up, still huge things, massive things that haven't happened at this club for oh, twenty huge. plus years are taking place off the pitch. So uh, I just feel, I, you know, the, the timing of it of it's quite key as we count down to the end of the season. Um, it could go either way, but let's hope it's the fairy tale. And it is, it is the promotion, you know. And it will, and it will be. I mean, try to look at Burnsbury compared to last season. Absolutely. Um, I mean, Norwich won't have the parachute, and neither will Watford. They'll join the rest of the the, the championship great, teams. We've said that, we've debated this before. It's still great, doesn't it, that you've been really shit in the in the, the division you were supposed to be good in, and then you get rewarded <laughs> for, for, for being relegated. Like you said, it should go. It should save jobs. It shouldn't go on players. Oh, it, it should be. It, it should be ring fence for off field activity yeah. for you know the, the the canteen staff for the for the groundsmen for the stewards for the for all of the people that aren't on. 150, and I'm not saying any players at the moment are on, on this, but I, I, you know, triple figures 150 grand a week, 80 grand a week because they don't, they, you know, they are well protected in, in their own salary. You know, it, 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 it's a steward yeah. who's earning, I don't know, what, 20 pounds an hour? Uh, who's told, who's told yeah. now the, the, the gates are lower? Canteen stuff. We, we don't need you. Restaurant or whatever, yeah. Yeah, things like that. that that's that's my opinion. But it's um, quite it's quite interesting when you like when we talk about private equity and stuff because as you know, I watch a lot of Bundesliga, and you know the German fans have been protesting about Bundesliga, the DFL selling TV rights to a uh, capital venture capital firm. They wanted to sell them for like something like a billion euros, of which the yeah. clubs would would share it out across a 50 year period and the German fans wouldn't have it they started throwing chocolate money onto the pitch in games so games were taking two hours to complete because in each half it took 15 minutes to clear all this stuff off the, the pitch and at the end uh, in February last month the DFL said we're, we're, we're not going to do it but that money would have been interestingly is would have been ring fenced not for transfers but infrastructure staff all that kind of thing but see you know the, the, the this is where i get my periods thing from i think the german fans they don't want anything like that I- infiltrating no. german football hence they have the 50 plus one share ownership so it's always retained by members and it works yeah. for them it works for them i don't necessarily think it would potentially work in england that, that well, we're too far we're t- we haven't got the model we're too far down the line here in england i mean the bundesliga is i think my, one of the most watched divisions in world football certainly has the best attendances when you consider how big the stadiums mm-hmm. are Someone like Borussia Mönchengladbach, which is where Leeds got Farker from after you left Norwich, I've got bloody sixty thousand seat a stadium. Ain't no better and, and, than that. Yeah, and that's what right. I meant with it. I don't think it worked. I think the horse has left 
yeah, 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 yeah. It's you're, completely you're, different. It's completely your, different. Your saving grace, obviously, is 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 now this uh, ombudsman, is this this regulator. Um, that's it's why be it's why Bayern big. Munich can have a hundred forty five euro season ticket. I mean, bloody hell! And then within that, you get your travel into the stadium as well. So you ain't but doing what I'm doing. Twenty six quid on Greater Anglia, and then paying your season ticket money on top and all that. I'm in Germany most most Saturday afternoons. So I could probably really? get a dual, a dual you're season. You can see Bayern Munich. <laughs> more of a frankfurt fan um but um yeah, yeah exactly yeah you know, people will say about the just just to finalize your point before i bring in a film and we've got colin as well Te people will say oh yeah but the three teams coming down this year they're in they're, they're in rack and ruin they're a mess every team relegated is always seen to be in rack and ruin and a mess i, I remember the conversation this time last year about you know oh who do we want coming down to play, play in the championship or oh, we want so and so because they're they're, they're 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 in this state this yeah the they're three teams bad, really are, they though. might be bad compared to the top table teams <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly but they're still going to be like you know one of the gladiators gone... walking into the to, to your local yeah. gym it's like it's, yeah. it's gonna be, you know. who's gone who's gone from the premier league right through a division sunderland i can't even think of it happening one time portsmouth maybe over a few seasons went down to league two but it's, example, very, it's very rare that you've got a club I mean, Stoke have been fairly crap, haven't they, since they came down from the Premier League? But it's rare, isn't it? They're generally knocking on the door to go back, as we're seeing, as we're seeing this season. We just how it happens. We're the fly in the ointment at the moment, and long may it continue. And no, and Stephen says Leeds, uh, uh, Leicester, Leeds, and Saints all had 100 million to sell. None of these have. To, I think they'll they'll have they'll have players, Stephen, to sell. It might not be to the levels of the three teams that just come down, but they're still going to have players to sell that are then going to be able to, along with the parachutes, help. They, they, they'll be strong if then if the three teams are in the top eight, then I'll, I'll issue a public apology Leeds, to you, Stephen. Le Leeds kind of balanced their books, didn't they? They sold that lad to Bournemouth for common reason. name, scored at Portman Road, one who, who sent Brandon Williams flying. Um, but they've held on to Jorginho Ritter, they got from Hoffenheim who? for about 20 mil, <laughs> yeah, for about 20 mil. Um, they bought that Joel Perot in, didn't they, for about 10 million. I mean, as, as we were saying, when your QPR mate was saying, Oh, you spent loads of money, we ain't spent Leeds money, have we? You spent a million and a half on George Hurst becoming a championship player. No. And as I reminded him, we, we've we already got Julio Cesar and Christoph Samba playing for us, you know. Where it's, <laughs> you know Samba, yeah. If one club can, can speak about sort of spending money, it certainly keep me yeah, up, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a season for him, wasn't it? Christoph Samba at the back, who I don't think was very was fit Is that enough. Harry Redknapp? Was that Harry Redknapp season? Yeah, the back end of the relegation the year, I think that was, wasn't it? Yeah. Julio Cesar. Um, yeah, real, real old season for them. That real, yeah, real, yeah. real, 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 real odd. Uh, okay, we're bringing Phil. Phil, lots to talk about. Um, Hi, Phil. How you doing? What are your thoughts Good, and thanks. feelings on on everything we've covered, on everything you've right, heard, etc. Et et it's all of the above. Everything that you've discussed so far this evening, all of the above. You know, I think I'm say when when it was announced, um, amazingly out, completely out of the blue, this new hundred plus million pound investment. You know, from from America that. Um, I think for me, most of it will probably go into, you know, redeveloping the training ground and then eventually the Cobbold stand, in my opinion. Um, I'm going to say I'm not looking forward. I'm saying I'm not looking at the moment beyond this season because, you know, we're now in the final stretch, you know, the finishing line is on the horizon. You know, we can yes. almost smell uh, the riches of the Premier League and um, whatever happens, I'll be looking forward to next season. What does that smell like? What does that smell like? Phil? What does it smell Money. like? Money. Gold, money, gold. <laughs> like the old, it's, it's like that. That, if it's in the film, the film, the Titanic, of the lookout says he can smell eyes, and uh, it's right. like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. You can smell, I can smell money, 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 money. It's all about the money. It's <laughs> like the OJ's money. in here. Money, 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 money. Are you, still, are you, are you, are you happy with the investment? Would you, are you, yes, leaning more yeah. towards my purest way of? I wish we could have done it through promotion. No, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say with, with the board members that have um, vacated their seats to yeah. allow these two new members onto board, you know, they've they've basically made money from this um, transaction, you so, know. Yeah. And I would say when when you know this consortium came in, you know, 2021, those members on the board were not Marcus Evans, were they? They didn't have the same level of you know, money behind them as Marcus Evans, uh, but they certainly were millionaires. Um, well, they bought, and, they uh, bought the Arizona pension fund to the table, didn't they? And that's they that's, did. Where, it was a where does he but... sit now? Not not on the board. Of, I don't, that mean like around the yeah, table. He had a small <laughs> stake, right? He had a small yeah. stake. Well, they've they've, they've 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 still got sixty percent of the 
um, pie that they bought off Evans in 2021. So um, I'm so they've sold 40 40 percent of it, you know, bringing in you know new money. Um, 50 percent is that PSPRS in Arizona, and then they've got the correct, 10. Yeah. They've got to, they he, actually he, 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 the high the profile, mate. Right? They've got the, they've actually got the smallest stake out of everybody, haven't they? Mm. Yeah, well, they have. But they, but yeah. Evans did did retain a percent. He retained some. I think I he, think yeah. he still got like two 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 and a half percent, perhaps. But if memory serves me correctly, didn't it? Every time or every year, he didn't put investment in it. It would dilute, it or it would it would yeah. So because I wonder where, I wonder where all this. I'm, I'm I gonna, think I think I'm with gonna, this yeah. new level of investment, right? I think it's valued the club around 250, 260 million say, pounds, it, which it, is a crazy, it, uh, which is a crazy valuation for yeah. a championship club, for a yeah. club that has not kicked, a, you know, a ball in the Premier League for more than twenty years. I think that's a crazy valuation. But yeah. you know, you know, that's yeah. how things work nowadays. You know, certainly yeah. on the balance sheet, all of a sudden we're worth two hundred and sixty million pounds. Wow. You know, but, um, but uh, no, I'm I'm looking forward to the years ahead. I think I think for an Ipswich Town fan, you know, we're all we're all going to be on a high over the next two or three seasons. But, um, did you go? Did you go to the game on Saturday, Phil? The women's game? No, I didn't. I yeah. I was I, I was supposed to be involved in something other than football, a creative activity that I was kind of oh, looking really? forward to. I paid for the privilege, but the chap running it, organising it, uh, pulled out at the last minute because he was unwell and. Um, I think that he's really, been the, moving the house. Reason, yeah. The reason I ask is because obviously, when Ashton was at Bristol City, they went through a huge training ground infrastructure change, and then it's the stadium, really, and then the stadium was, you know, all of it was practically rebuilt, wasn't it? What, yeah, I mean, this is kind of what he does, and I, I think they, he's I, very, he's very good at it. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, I mean, I think Bristol City women have their own kind of dedicated stadium area with stands, etc., right. at their training grounds. So I'm wondering whether or not. Having seen the success of, well, I mean, look, they got well, ten thousand there Saturday. Whether or not they'll, they'll have their own dedicated ground at at, Wood, at Woodbridge rather than having to go to Phoenix, though, that'd be that. Well, great Woodbridge, Woodbridge is, I would say, Woodbridge is a bit awkward. Um, I think they'd be better off playing Phoenix, though, in my mind. You know, um, I think you'd have a whole new know, infrastructure there, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, I certainly would, but I, I can't, I can't see. I can't see the club building a separate stadium for the women, mm. if I'm being honest. I, mean, I don't know how big that Bristol City one is. I'll have to look it up, Martin, but I'm pretty certain they've got like a little dedicated area with, with seating. and. Right. Well, you, you well, might I think... get something at the training ground. Obviously, they're under-21s and they and they invite ticket holders, season ticket holders in. I mm. mean, you might get a very small grandstand type, but I, I don't know about that. I mean, I have to look, I'd, have to, I'd have to find out. Let's see know. if it comes part of the plans. Let's wait, let's wait and see. What I've seen of the artist illustration so far looks really. Yeah, I'm gonna say I, I've I've only up. just seen the um the uh, the artist plans for yeah, the training ground, and they yeah. look impressive. They're that proper yeah. proper Premier League training ground gaff. That, I mean, say that looks spectacular. Mm. Uh, I mean, say so they're going to build it right alongside the um, dome, aren't they? They're going to take away. So there's a big row of sort of Leylandi trees there. So you have to uproot those and take them out and. You know, maybe take up some of the car park space as well. But yeah, that looks proper, bro. That yeah. looks, you know, very exciting. Yeah, I mean, looking I'm saying, looking look, at the artists, you know, plans that have been released, it doesn't conception. look like there's anything um, on I, there that was this a, a small a, a small stadia. No, 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 no. I mean, say uh, I, I can't, I can't look. I mean, say Felix though holds around two thousand fans, and they have got. I'm saying they. I love that ground. You know, I've been to it many times in the last three or four years. And um, have you refereed that? No, I filmed that. I used to, I'm say back in 2017, 2018, I was I was asked by a couple club officials to come along and film the men's team on a Saturday afternoon. Okay. So I did that for about cool. a season and a half. And then the pandemic hit in March 2020, mm -hmm. and everything went to yeah, yeah, yeah. do da. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that was enjoyable, and um, I remember they they got a bumper crowd um, on the last day, or was it the, or the second to last day of the Eastern Counties season before they won promotion to the Ishmael League, and uh, it was a top of the table clash against Ollie Moores' Coggleshaw. Oh yeah, so I think Coggleshaw were in first, and Felix Stowe had to beat them to win the league, and um, unfortunately, I think Felix Stowe lost on the night, but. There was a bumper crowd there of more than sixteen hundred, and oh, uh, Oli, Oli Murs turned up. Oli Murs was there with his team because he, he joint owns Coggleshaw at the time. Don't think even at that even at that level, Phil. Oli Murs yeah. in money into Coggleshaw, even at that yeah. level. Yeah, where no one's yeah. making a pound, though, really. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, so yeah, look, all all of all of the above. You know, it's it's good times. You know, them guys. They've made them. They've obviously you know more than made their money back on their original state when uh, when they put the money into the club in 2021. Good for them. Good for all the supporters and everyone connected to the club. You know, it's it's given it's given the team and the club and everyone associated with the club a boost going into the final stretch of this Agreed. season. Yeah. And the timing ca- couldn't couldn't have been more better. You know, um, am I going to the Blackburn game on Friday? No, I'm not. Um, I've got um, one or two problems that I need to sort out first. But I am going to get to the whole game. I think that would be the last away game that I go to this season, which would Southampton make... at Pullman Road on the Monday. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, the home games, obviously, because I'm a season ticket holder. But yeah. uh, no, the uh, I was planning on going to the Coventry game. I'm relieved that it's not being rescheduled for on Sky, earlier on the week because yeah, if if it had been, it would have clashed with a work meet. Um, I've got to go up to um, South Yorkshire for a work meet for for a team meet, and uh, I was fearing that might be on the same day. Um, but it's obviously been rescheduled for the 30th, which um, I've dodged a bullet with that one, so I'm fine with that one. Um, sure makes a good out. point. Read this one out. Yeah, yeah, read this one out, Martin. Yeah. Uh, Playford Road, as the club is going for Catman Crash yeah. we won Academy, I think they need stands yeah. for the spectators. Oh, it's D, right? Wow. Okay, I didn't know that. Top class pitch, which, you know, if, if that's true, I've got no reason to doubt Sean at all there. Yeah. Um, didn't know that. That's an interesting, an interesting yeah. point, an interesting way we to, to move forward. I know, I know the. The gold star, as it was called, I don't know what it uh, is. It LG Arena now. It's yes, yeah, the uh, it's the LG. Uh, uh, whatever, wh- wh- yeah, whichever arena. fix and Warren's ground is called. I know it's always. Is it flooding? Waterlogged pitch? Is it? It's the. Drain, I just. Super, I, I just really think of it as Delwood Avenue. You know. It's, it's yeah, likewise, Avenue, likewise. Yeah. But it's, it, it, yeah. isn't there like a? It's not. It's not the best in terms of getting games on in the winter. Is that, is that right? Am I right in thinking that? Phil? Well, I don't know. yeah. I mean, say, look. I mean, say we've we've had a lot of rain the last two or three months. Well, that's and, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. This is an anomaly in, in itself. But um, I'm asking you as somebody who's probably been there a lot, a lot more than I have uh, in terms of. How... Yeah, I would say there are. I would say they do. They do. They do like to protect the playing surface. When it when you get a lot of rain. Um, you know, on a surface like that at a non-league club, they don't have the financial resource to well, employ, not, employ no. a groundsman full time to take care of the grass and, you know, make sure that, you know, that when it does rain, that, you know, the water's just going to seep into the turf and you wouldn't get any, you know, standing water. So, uh, but no, um, they do protect it when it rains a lot during the week and then the ground becomes sodden, maybe, water, you know, waterlogged. They just don't, they just don't use it because otherwise... You know the playing surface just gets cut cut up terribly, mm-hmm. and then well, towards the end of the season, you just get a couple of dirt bowls in the goal areas, and you think it's just not worth it. You know, so they'll they'll po- postpone the games and then play them, you know, midweek on a Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. But um, I know Felix, so they've got a they've got a Premier Cup semi final uh, tomorrow night. They're going in, great guns aren't against they? against Leicester. Really well. mm. Against Leicester, if what I'm saying, Leicester, they're not having the best of seasons this season, are they? I've been yeah. there, Leiston. Victory Road. Yeah, Victory no, Road. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. dirt track. It was the delusions of danger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> what I was expecting, Phil. I thought it was going to be like flag you think, bearing. You think you're going to the ends of the world when you go to non-league grounds <laughs> yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. It is like that, yeah. Interesting, though. You, and thanks for bringing, you know, sort of clarifying those points mm. there. Because I, I, all I ever see is somebody, you know, outside looking in is sort of games off. And I don't understand, you know, obviously know the full reasons why. So it's really good to, to hear from you who's been there more recently yeah. and goes there quite a bit. As, as the understanding behind that. But it's something the women's team may look at or Ashton and Cone may look at. I don't know in terms of... Well, you are I, think, I, think, I think, I think, I mean, so I obviously didn't know about the, the Category 1 um, no, likewise. status about having, you know, stands for it. I mean, say that would be pretty special if, um, you know, the women's team did, you know, switch their home games to, yeah. you know, Playford Road and... You know, play in front of you four or five thousand fans. You want to you want to capitalise the momentum you've seen at the weekend, right? Obviously, they're not going to play at Pullman Road every week, but clearly there's an interest there of people wanting to go and see them. Um, yeah, I mean, say more than ten thousand turn up to the game. Yeah. That's amazing. amazing. Yeah, really That's amazing. I mean, say it's, it's really just. Good. I would say it's just a bit of a shame that there is no other ground within. Yeah. Fifteen twenty miles. Well, Coventry's yeah. ground, but I don't think they'd want to go. De- you know, I don't think the club would want to have to pay to use somebody else's playing service. Too, too big as well, yeah. Right? Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, 
I mean, say, so I just hope that tomorrow, I think Wales have got their final game against uh, Poland. And let's just hope that Kiefer Moore and Broadhead stay injury free. Yeah, they were on the bench, weren't they, against Finland? Well, well, Moore came on for the last three. Oh, yeah. Broadhead came on for the last two or three. Burgess got through his game against Australia. Sarmiento got through, through his game against Italy. Started, um, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, uh, last, last night, night, played 80 minutes, got an assist. Mm -hmm. Just a bit of a shame that he didn't win. But um, I think he was, I think he was their. I think he was Ecuador's best player, wasn't he? In that game, I was in New Jersey, wasn't he? I didn't see the game. But... No, no, it's right. Like yeah. yeah, but no, I mean, so let's just just hope that Moore and Broadhead stay injury free tomorrow oh, night, and um, <laughs> yeah, you know, we can get them. You know, but I mean, so that's a quick turnaround, isn't it? Tuesday night playing against Blumen oh, Poland good. to playing up at Ewood Park in the northwest. <laughs> yeah, be a don't, title don't one th for Cam Burgess, won't it? That's the yeah. thing. Yeah, it's going to be. Well, Rich, Richie's theory was he wouldn't play in the game, wasn't it? And we, we thought maybe Edmondson. But we'll where, wait and where see, was eh? that? Was that Australia game in Australia? Was it somewhere yeah, else? Yeah, it was in the end. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, it was. It's yeah, 12, absolutely. Twenty-four hour flight, crikey. Yeah, yeah he's mm. a time traveller. Hello, all right, Phil. Thanks for jumping on and giving That's us right. your, your thoughts as always. I think, Look I, I think I think my prediction for Saturday is that we'll win, but we need to be wary of of uh, Mr. Schmodick's um, twenty-one you know, goals. Yeah. Well, they're not one they, since February the tenth, have they, Blackburn? No, but I would say they—they—they—they they, 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 they did. They did win the other week, didn't they? They've drawn. They've drawn. Uh, they've Blackburn. now February the tenth was their last win. They've drawn the last oh, three. Right. I think they've drawn the last three. Mm. They've drawn the last three, four, three of the three last five. One defeat. They need a win, really. They're three points of relegation, so yeah, yeah, they, they do. Need, they they need points. But we oh, need it. We, we we need it more than them. So <laughs> yeah. you know, after after Good Friday, they can do what they want. But Good Friday, the point, you know, the points are ours. You know. So, yeah, win, 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 win. You're right. It's like eight, you're right. You know, eight games to go, 20, 20, 24 points incoming. Let's, let's do yeah. it. All right, Phil, look after yourself. Thanks for jumping on with all us. Best, yeah. all, all the best. Uh, some great points there. Hamish says, Phil's right. Blackburn is a dangerous game. It is a dangerous game. I'm not quite sure it falls into the trap game territory, though, Matthew Phillips. I'm not, I'm, I'm, no, I'm but I mean, play. you know, there's a reason why they've not won a game since February the 10th. is because they've not been playing very well. But, I mean, they've been drawing games as well. So, I mean... Would we take a point on the road at Ewood Park? Sitting here now, we probably wouldn't, would we? A team that's three points off relegation. But Smodix is a good player, right? I mean, 21 goals in all competitions, um, I think. Or it may be just league games. I'm not sure. I'm not interested since then. But, um, you know, we've got to keep him quiet. But look, he's a player we've, we've been on our radar for a long time, haven't we? How much would he cost in the summer, I wonder? He'd only be playing at Blackburn and in relegation fight. Want well, to be with a town on his doorstep. Was he Colchester, lad? So he come uh, through. Great question. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah I think you know. it was. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it'd be great. It'd be a great addition to us. I mean, bloody hell! Look at us sitting here thinking, how good is Connor uh, Connor Chaplin? And he said Connor McGregor. Then I've been thinking about Roadhouse. Uh, how good is Connor Chaplin around the box? I mean, look at Smodich. He scored at Portman Road as well, didn't he? So. He's a great player. He's a really good player. Obviously, Travis won't be available this weekend no. to play against his parent uh, club, which. Is part of the loan agreement and, and something you expect now in football with loan players. Um, the longer we, of the we, days are the, are the clubs giving dispensation, Matt. Well, funny enough, we talk about Bundesliga. They they allow that in the Bundesliga. You can play against your parents. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, when I've watched Frankfurt, a Frankfurt player has scored against Frankfurt to win the, the opposition of the game. Yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? I wonder if they let them forget about it when they return to their clubs. So they fit odd that. But yeah, we don't have important goal, it says them down or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit of an odd situation. But I mean, what is the deal with Chaplin? Because obviously he misses Sheffield Wednesday. Amari plays there. Wes Burns gets injured against Sheffield. We now think we ain't probably going to see him again for the rest of the season. Um, so who's going to be fit? I mean, is Chaplin fit? Is Amari going to play in that 10? Who's going to play on the right if Amari has to go in the 10? Is it going to be Gaiden? I'm in the wilderness, well, man. I need answers to these questions. I've been here before. This is, this is the thing. Uh, so let's live in the world of you haven't got Wes for a minute. So yeah. you go... Uh, but, but but you have got Connor, so you move a Murray to the right, you bring Connor back in. Yeah, I mean that's the yep. ideal scenario, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't got either, what do you, who do you play on the right side? Do you do you go um, ooh, Marcus Harness? There's not really a right side player, so Sarmiento could go over there, I suppose. Shawnee Aluko comes into the side. <laughs> who remind me who started? Who came on? It was Caden Jackson. Do, do you go Caden. with the Caden Jackson? That would be Caden, on that. On that? Yeah, I think it'd he's, be Caden. He's the only natural fit for that right side, isn't he? Because Marcus has, has played more left than he has anywhere else behind the three. Yeah. 
Caden's yeah, exactly. played right more than he's played anywhere else behind the three. So I guess I guess Caden is your de facto third yeah, so, option if so Amari's no, not able to play. Well, I mean, look, we think Mario will play. It'd be, it's no, no, I, what I mean is, what I mean is, if you know, Wes is your de facto right number yeah. one choice, then you've got Amari so number injured. two. Yeah. So if you're using Amari elsewhere and number one's injured, yes. KJ is your de facto it. three, isn't he? Unless you maybe put Harry Clark into that role and you play Twain Zabit right back. But that seems quite cavalier for McKenna to try that. Stephen Parry says, uh, and he played right wing for Wimbledon. He, he, he may have done Stephen, but he's not played anywhere but left for, for McKenna so far, is he? So. Well, well, left on, central, central on. left. Um, yeah, I don't, I can't see that. I mean, he's too, he seems too invaluable from the bench at the moment. He seems to come on from the bench and score goals. Mm -hmm. Look what he did against Sheffield Wednesday. I, I, I think if Chaplin doesn't play, Amari goes into the 10 and, and, and Jackson would be there. But, um, yes, yeah, if neither is available, you what, what it really hurts is your ability to change the game from the bench, which we, we where we've seen us be so strong this year is McKenna's changes being sitting with Wes. Yeah, and yeah. and as Rich, if he was here, tell us the stat of how many goals from the bench. But if you haven't got Wes and, and Connor, yeah. you lose that ability because if you're looking at your Trump three of being KJ, Amari, and, and Brody, for example, where are you really changing the game off the bench? Because you've got Sarmiento, Ali, and, and isn't that really the options it? Yeah, potentially. And then you're going back into central midfield, aren't you, in defence, I suppose. Yeah. Exactly. Or you are calling on a... a and a Luco to come out of the out of the, the wilderness to, to, to steal your phrase there. Because <laughs> yeah. um, he hasn't played a game other than in a cup game this year. He hasn't played a league minute, that's for sure. I don't think. Yeah. Unless I've missed it. Um, this is what happens though. You know, like we say, you know, a week in football is a, a long time. You suddenly get, you know, out of the blue comes this Burns injury. And then suddenly, you know, Chaplin ain't playing against Sheffield Wednesday even. And suddenly you're thinking, oh, bloody hell, is this going to pan out for the next game? But look, if we have I, these we have these problems, other clubs are going to be having these problems as well. It ain't just exclusive to us, is it? In the I just see Matt says, could you see Jack Taylor no. and Tim with Murray on the right? That is a shout. I mean, look, we've we've look, yes, play, people don't think he's played. He did play there for Peterborough in the run up to the playoffs. Like, yeah, you know, but with Travis not being available, I don't see him being thought of in that position for for Blackburn. I see him. He, yeah, I get it. A, yeah. Unless you no, see just, a, I'm just chewing the fat. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, it is an option. Is a option from the bench potentially, but oh, it is. Yeah, it is an option. Yeah, but uh, mm. Kem Humphreys on the bench to go into centre midfield. If you did that, Luke for me, because I don't, I, I don't know where. You know, I can't imagine Luke who's sort of a hundred percent match fit, having what played zero. No. Is it zero league minutes? He might have played a few. I don't know. But the, the the last cup game was Maidstone. That's several weeks away. I mean, you can train all you like. Match. He was warming up, wasn't he? He was warmed up before. His I got into the ground early for Chef Wed and he was warming up. Yeah, but you can there. train all you like, but you've heard it throughout the years. Players always say playing games is where you get your, yeah. fit, your, your real sharpness from. Yeah. And... You'd be asking a lot. For, look, you know what our town fans are like? <laughs> you come on as a sub or whatever at a crap game, everyone would just be calling him useless. So, um, you know, he, 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 he'll do what the manager tells him. McKenna says you're on the bench, you're coming on to play right side with 20 to go. He'll do it, won't he? But, yeah. But, I mean, look... He's had no game. It's been an odd decision all season. I mean, you questioned this back in the summer while well, they retained him when it could have been somebody else. But but then you're looking at these kind of players when you're faced with injury problems like, is Chaplin going to be fit? Don't know. Will we see Wes again this season? Unlikely. You know, then, then you're down to the bare bones a little bit, aren't you? Yeah. But then, yeah, yeah, no, you are. You are. So, obviously, Halaki in goal, undisputed, reigning heavyweight goalkeeper of, of the Talking century. Of We're back tomorrow. We are back tomorrow with some talking knockouts. knockouts. Good little yeah. segue there for you. Look, uh, back four of Clark or Twins are at right back. Uh, I would. Mm, I'd I go Clark probably, personally. Would you? I would. I would say away from home, I'm probably going to go Twins Abbey, but there we go. We've got what, different. What, like Leeds. Well, like Leeds. Well, he played in the middle for that one, didn't he? He still played away from home. Been in great form. Twins Abbey's been in very good form. He um, has. No, no, no. I, 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 I jest. He has. He has. So, so, I, so, I, 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 I like Clark. But Clark is the more natural right back. I mean, we've said certainly in getting forward. Um, maybe, which maybe you may need. Which, which you may, may need. need yeah. Right if if Blackburn aren't winning games, then you know maybe you want that more pressing, attacking uh, threat from the right side, of which Clark would would bring you that. Is Cam going to play for you, or is it a Fridge and Wolfie combination, or, or maybe moving the Axel in, in, into the central centre with with Wolfie, and you you're going to play Clark at the right? I, I mean, think, is, is that uh, option? I think Fridge will play. I think that's too much of a. I think that's too much of an answer, Burgess. To have to, if it was a Saturday, maybe different. But to come back, 
from Australia and then play and then play on a Friday seems a very big ask to me. Ain't around the corner, is it? As Phil said earlier, it's a twenty-four hour flight almost. Mm, it is a big yeah. Well, you, can, you can sleep on it. <laughs> you get one of them little cabins, lie down. They'll track go, yeah, they'll, 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 they'll probably be tracking his sleep, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he a big lad though? Can he? Does he fit into one of them cabins? Like I'll be all right. I, I, I don't know. I, you I really right. your bloody size sixteens, whatever. They are. I don't think he'll play both games. For, for in my no, opinion, if, if, if he makes Friday, he'll miss Monday. For me, but he if he makes, if he, yeah, that's what that's where I think he'll probably play. I, I agree. I at Blackburn. I'd be I mean, incredibly look. surprised if he plays both. And in and in Leaf at left back, obviously. Obviously, uh, Morsi and, and Massimo in the middle, of course, yep. goes without saying. And then we've, we've, we've covered, the, and then more up front because you've well, he's good, but you've got nobody else really, yeah. Um, yeah. other than Ali that I don't think yeah. is ready to play away from him as a starting position. And a very diff- and a very different player. I mean, he's not sticking 100%. his head in like Keith Moore. Oh, look, Keith Keith Moore is just an unusual, unique player, isn't he? Six foot six, is he? Six five, yeah. six six, with, with twinkle toes. Great, great feet, and he'll stick his head in there. And Ali's more of a poacher, isn't he? As we saw against Sheffield Wednesday, he was in the right place at the right time. Bags himself a brace off the bench with like 20 to go. Mm. Fair play to him, I love it. You're right, though. That's what I do like about Moore. You know, he's, he's a big lad, so you can, you can do the big the big striker things, but he's all got those twinkle toes. You know, he's good with his feet. He's yeah, very athletic. He's, yeah. I'm so pleased for him because, like, you know, we saw him come out of where – where did we sign him from again? Was it Forest, Forest Green? Green, yeah. I mean, look, he looked like a non-league player trying to find his ground in, in the championship and it was too much of a goal for him. But, and so he goes away and, you know, he did well in those loan spells and he's had a good career. He's become an international. He's played at Premier League level. He's come back and, you know, a totally different player. I'm so pleased for him. He's been and a great signing, as, as we as most of us thought he probably would be. Mm, absolutely. I'll ask you for a score prediction in a moment. We are going to finish shortly because I've got to dash off... Um, for something, oh, yeah, something I, ha- I have. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. It's all under control, Matthew Phillips. Don't worry. Oh, you've, uh, oh, you've well, been calling, have you? I have, of course. Colin, welcome in. We're going to finish with yourself. Then we'll oh, do a score prediction. How are you feeling? Obviously, I mean, the investment news must have been like, well, some oxygen for you. <laughs> yeah, I was. Um, yeah, like like you said tonight, completely out of the blue, you know, and um, fantastic news, you know, and I'm I'm just. Obviously, dreaming a bit, I suppose. If and when we get this promotion that we all desperately hope that we do get, um, and I believe the the Sky Money now is about I don't know what it is, about 190 odd million, something like that. And only, yeah, and only going up, and yeah, you know. yeah, say 190 to 200 million on top of this. Um, you know, the club. Is in a fantastic place, and I and I love what Matt said earlier. Well, Gov, well, you both said it really <clears throat> about Mr. O'Leary. One must never ever forget about what he's done for this football club, and I've been privileged and honoured to speak to him on two or three occasions at length, and he is the nicest person that this football club has had in control for a long, long time. Now, I've always been very, very pro Mark Aston, as you both know, on this channel. And he's very, very, very good at his job. Now, Matt says what he says about Mr. Aston. I personally think from looking from outside in, um, he does a magnificent job for this football club. But he's got Mike always in the background um, as a probably a father a fatherly a fatherly figure to him and that is only fantastic news this football club and we are in fantastic hands uh, with that gentleman and um, you know rather like really when David Sheepshanks was the chairman of this football club um, he absolutely adored the football club, and um, and 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 ran the chairmanship, if you like, um, along those lines. And um, and I think, although Mike O'Leary isn't like an Ipswich Town fan, if you like, 
Um, but I think he's from the Midlands originally. Um, I think he's come to really, really love this football club. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it just, I just think, like, obviously with Kieran and we've said this before, but, and also with this investment, I firmly believe, and I, I texted Sister Mike Brown the other day, um, I, I think you'll find, irrespective of what happens over this next six or seven weeks, um, I think you'll find Kieran McKenna will be here next season. And uh, and and possibly the season after. I think this project is very highly invested here, and this is in this uh, project. And and I and I and I firmly and, and and I firmly believe that he'll see this through until he gets to where he wants to be, and where he obviously wants his club to be. And I think, um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be very much on the knife edge um, from now to the end of the season. Um, I was watching a little bit of my friend Connor today from Leeds, and he made his predictions today. Our Connor, and he had Leeds to win the league. No, sorry, correction. He had Leicester to win the league. He had Leeds to finish second. And he had Ipswich to win the playoffs. So so the old tripe are not quite so tripey these days, apparently. Well, but the best of the rest of the tripe. <laughs> next, <laughs> Connie, next but, time you speak to Mr. O'Leary, can you do me a favour? Can you ask him how many box files he's got? I want to I know. Will, I will do. I will ask it. I did found, find that quite, um, quite hilarious when he was talking about that earlier. But, I, th- I agree um, with you though about that. McKenna's got one of the best jobs in English football at the moment, Colin. And we've I've said I this believe, on the show so. before. That he's backed by he's backed by Ashton. He's backed by Mike O'Leary. He's backed by the the Free Lions. It's going to be backed now off the pitch by this new investment coming forward. I mean, look, if he did leave, who wouldn't want to not be Ipswich Town manager? It's a great to be able to pick that baton up and move forward mm. with it. Who wouldn't want to be coming to Ipswich? With all these things going on. Very exciting time for the club, isn't it? Uh, like I said earlier, I, you know, uh, maybe people might say, "Oh, you know, take your blue tinted glasses off." But um, I, I only speak from what I, you know, not not all from my heart. A lot of it is from my head, and I and and I look at here, I look at here, and and I find, I feel I find an honest respectable total lovely gentleman mm-hmm. and i and i actually believe that and i think he's an honest man and i think i'm not i'm not silly enough to sit here and think he'll be here as long as maybe bobby was but i honestly believe if we reach the promised land which i firmly believe we will you know i'd say that He'll of be course. with us, and, and 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 I'm not silly enough to think even if we're in the Premier League, he'll be here for five, six, seven years. But I I think if he gets us into the Premier League this year, he'll he'll definitely be with us for at least another two seasons, if not three. I firmly be, because you know at the end of the day, at the end of the day, and I'm not, never going to be disrespectful to any football club. I'm just speaking honestly and fairly when you look at luton when you look at brentford when you look at bournemouth and the like they will never be as big as ipswich town football club they will not be they're they're better than us right now because they're in the premier league and i'm not silly enough to say any different but as regards you know their 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 ceiling as an as an actual football club. They're not bigger than town, and they never will be. And I and I think 
They overtook Sorry, us, Matt. Colin, didn't they? And during the Evans era, they, they had right and these I, clubs and overtook I, us because they were better Matt, managed. Sorry, interrupt, Matt. And I and I commend I commend them for that. I do commend them for that. I mean, I always I I you know, I don't care who people say. Oh, here you go back. You know, here here you go back in the old days. I mean, I saw Bournemouth. I was only a young lad. I 1968, I was 11. I saw, saw Bournemouth play up at Berry Town, up the old Kings Road, in the FA Cup first round. It was on match of the week, you know, as, as a third division club. And to be fair, in all my time really supporting Ipswich up until about the last 10 or 15, or I don't know how long it is, 10 years, 10 years ago or 12 years ago, whatever, they've always been really, in my lifetime, a fourth or third division football club. And that's no disrespect. I absolutely, so I'm sorry to cut you into there, Matt. I really apologise. But they, they, they are where they are for a reason. Because they have overtook us, Matt. I totally agree with you. Um, but as, I mean, they're still getting 11,000. At Dean Court, and going on to the game that I actually, well, I actually went on Saturday. You know, the attendance that was there on Saturday, funnily enough, was the third highest attendance of the whole weekend. Of the whole weekend, it was a bigger attendance than any attendance in the football league, in Division One or Division Two. Yeah, brilliant, fantastic, that unbelievable. But but the attendance that was there on Saturday was nigh on as high as an attendance at Bournemouth for a Premier League game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow, yeah. 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 When you say it like that, that's, um, yeah, yeah. And, wow. and sorry, Matt, uh, Gov, sorry, Gov. And, yes, and, also Lut- and also Luton. Yeah, mm. exactly. It would, be the same, it would be the same as Luton as well. You know, so, okay. you know, so it's, uh, yeah. But like I say, no disrespect to them clubs. They're there on 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 merit, um, and Bournemouth especially, yeah, well, and Brentford have done marvelously well as Premier League football clubs. They really have. But what I'm trying to say is, if and when we get back into that Premier League with the investments that we're having and all this that and the other, I can see us being better. I can see us being a Brentford, if not better, and I think, or a Wolves, that kind of stuff. I'd use Wolves as probably a bit a, a, yeah, a good yard. Agreed, yeah, 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 be good if we and, could follow that blueprint. Yeah, agreed. Brilliant, Wol- Colin. Wolves. Yeah, oh. sorry, sorry, well, Gav. sorry. So I've just got to sh- close the show because I've got to be somewhere in in a few minutes. But um, have you got a score prediction for me for the weekend? I'm gonna. I, I, I like Phil. I am a little, just a little bit nervy, maybe as well. He is a good footballer, and he knows where the better than that is. So, I might give him one. Um, again, we got fantastic support, up to four and a half thousand. Amazing. Inflatable day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I won't be having any inflatable, um, but I, I would, I would say. I'm going to go Blackburn Rovers 1, Ipswich Town 3. 3. Yeah, that is exactly what nice. I think. Oh, I confident too, but... Colin. Confident Colin. Love it. Love it. Colin, appreciate you coming on. Love the 3-1. Hopefully you're correct. We'll see, we'll see you best, in a big very soon. All right? Thanks, all the best. Take care. Bye-bye. Both Your you. score prediction, please, Matthew Phillips. Yeah, I'm going to go with that as well. 3-1, I like it. That was what I was thinking. Yeah, it's going to do the business. Take the momentum of all this new investment coming in off the pitch, put it onto the pitch, and let's go and get a go and get three yeah. big points and see where we are at the end of the day. Yeah, brilliant. Davis says two one. James has gone for the whole pack pack of Kool Aid. It seems four nil town. He's gone for. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, he's brilliant. guzzling the Kool Aid at home with James. He's like dousing himself in it like brute, it's like just <laughs> shoving it on. <laughs> Give me that Kool Aid. <laughs> Give me the Kool Aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? Why not? 3-0 says uh, Stephanie. 3-1 says Stephen. 2-1 says Paul. 
And Matt Spanar's gone for the very nervy 2-3. Two, three. Two, oh, my three. God. Yeah, it could be tense. Is it our turn for a yeah. late winner? Imagine it. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, my God. We've had loads. Of, like, it's been hell of a season for them, hasn't it? Bloody hell. We'll see. Plenty of twists and turns to come. So something's going to happen, but we'll wait. Yeah. Let's wait and see what happens Friday, eh? Fingers crossed. I'll tell you one thing we've got to be in the first 15 minutes, and that is as organised as Michael O'Leary's filing system. It's just brilliant, isn't it? It's the highlight of, that, the highlight of that announcement for me. Forget the That's bloody that. hundreds of millions. I'll tell you what, if our back line were that organised this year, we'd, we'd have a much better goal difference. So <laughs> <laughs> perhaps they can learn off each other there. I don't know. Right, we're done for the evening. Thank you for watching Talking Town. That's been Matt, Matty Phillips. Hopefully we've given you a, a fantastic show that you've enjoyed in the absence of our resident cruncher, uh, who's, who's still, you know, I hear Matt Stannard. I bet one of those files is a TT file. I bet it is as well. <laughs> I bet it is as well. <laughs> yeah. A lot, of, uh, lot of red writing on it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for watching. Uh, we are back post game after Blackburn. Back post game after South. Back tomorrow. Back tomorrow uh, for talking knockouts. Back post game for Southampton. Uh, then, we, of course, we're into the whole Derby week. I'm away. So Matt and Rich will be filling in as they did for the first Derby week. Yeah, the shellacking. <laughs> Timing my weeks away. Expert. Yeah, really good. Expertly well here, aren't I? I, Who signed this holiday off at Talking Town Towers? <laughs> Shocking. Um, oh, wait, that'd be me. Um, but uh, anyway, Matthew Phillips, the Gov. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. And we'll see you all very soon. Where's my button? I've lost it. I've all these shows. Bye-bye.